Hello, I'm John Smizer, and it's so good to greet you today. This is the beginning or the second day of our new year as it, we enter into 2024. I just pray God's blessing on you. And did you notice our book here today is number one. And so we're starting a, a new series and we're looking at a new passage of scripture. It's in the book of Mark. Now, I don't know how your uh, New Year's went. I don't know if you had uh, football games on or you had other events with family and things. But with my family, there was a whole lot of football going on. You know, the, diff the Orange Bowl, the Rose Bowl, the various bowl games here in America. And it's at those points, it's, I'm, I'm reminded about what we're going to be reading today in this uh, passage in Mark, that there, it's an important thing, uh, the team that is selected. Now, you know that uh, for the teams, they look at young men in high school and they look to see what are their statistics and things. And then they choose them as to how they can build a team. And in our portion today, we're going to watch Christ build his team. And we're going to look to see where it is it that we might also fit on this team. And the Lord is going to show his power to us through the, the work that he does. And we're going to be able to watch that, listen to it, and learn from it. Today, I just want to wish you a happy new year and blessings on you as we take the steps into this new year. Let's listen to this passage. It's being read for us now. Mark 1, 16-34 As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue, who was possessed by an impure spirit, cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly, come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. This passage today is familiar to us because we've read and heard this many times within the Christian community. And there's a message that I've always heard about it as Jesus is walking here uh, beside the Sea of Galilee. He saw Simon and James and they were fishing. And so what did he go and do? He said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And then just down here in verse 19, he says, And when he had gone a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, James and John. And in some translations, it says that they were mending their nets. I know here it says they were preparing their nets. Now, we didn't hear whether he said, Follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. But I'm, I'm wondering if he had called these two to be a mender of people's lives. As a, the, the, uh, Peter and, 
and Andrew to be fishers of men. Maybe James and John were to be menders or preparing people for. We don't know, but we know that Jesus saw these men and they he called them into the ministry. Now it goes on that I always wanted to know who am I following? You know, who's the leader? You know, whenever you go into a room or something and you look to see who's the leader here? Who's kind of in charge? Whose word do we follow? Well, at this beginning step for the disciples, it was critical for them to know who are they leading and what authority do they, do they have? And I love these passages in verse 21 and following where it says, they went to Capernaum and when the Sabbath came, uh, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching. His teaching, it was so spot on. I love that some of the uh, different uh, comedians talk about, you know, these the talking heads on the TV, blah, 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 blah. Or in the Peanuts cartoon, Charlie Brown, and when the adults are talking, it's blah, 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 blah. That might have been the way the teachers of the, of the Jewish community were seen as just blah, 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 blah. But not Jesus. For he was one who spoke with authority. That is, he proclaimed things that you have heard it said. But I tell you, when he was speaking of the Sermon on the Mount, so that it was with authority that he opened up the truths of God to the people. And that was ready to change lives. And that's who Simon and Andrew, James and John, they were following somebody who had the authority of, of the teaching that they grasp what was important. And then it goes on, verse 23, Just then a man in the synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out. It was an evil spirit. It was, it was someone within the community of uh, faith in the Jewish traditions. Somebody within that synagogue wasn't filled with an evil spirit. And you know that Jesus, who had shown authority in his teaching, also had authority over this evil spirit. And as the evil spirit began to speak about and, and say, oh, uh, this is the Son of God, Christ hushed him. And he caused the spirit, the evil spirit, to come out of him. He showed the power that he had. And then down in verse uh, 28, it goes on, it says, news about him spread quickly over the whole region. How did news spread? There were no telecasts or televisions or anything that they could broadcast it. No, it was the word of mouth. People that were really impressed with his teaching, they saw him deal with evil spirits they shared that with their neighbors. You know, in my life, I have seen God's strength in the truth of his teaching from God's word. I also hear it from the pulpits, from the teachers, the people who speak for God into my life. And whenever I have an opportunity, I want to be sharing that with some other people. In fact, I got to tell you, just uh, this morning, as I was coming up to spend time with you on an elevator, there was a gentleman there, and I just said, how's your Christmas season going? He says, well, it's a little busy. And we talked for a moment. But I was able to speak into his life about Jesus and be able to encourage him. Now, I, I don't know where God will take that, but like these people, it says, news about him spread quickly. I pray that the gentleman I spoke to, I thank God that the people who heard the stories of Jesus, they sought him out then. I pray that this gentleman will reach out and look how he can connect to the reason for this season. And I pray that you'll be that witness also that will be touching people's lives.
Today we have seen the ministry of Jesus begin as he began picking his team. He also showed his authority by the teaching that he gave, by the way he was able to deal with evil spirit. Now, it goes on down here in verse 33, and it says, The whole town gathered at the door. Are you at the door? Or are, are you standing outside looking in? Or are you inside the house where the party's going on, where Jesus is healing and dealing with people's struggles? I, I encourage you this year, as you think about the decisions you make, that you're not just standing outside in the, at the doorway looking in to see what God's doing. But I want to encourage you this year to decide to go inside the house. If there's things that need to be dealt with in your life, God will do that. And if there's an opportunity to be part of the party, you, I want you to get involved. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, for this beginning of a new year. And as our uh, hearts and minds are refreshed and, and knowing that it's a new beginning, you give us an opportunity to start afresh. And Lord, may we receive the lessons of this past year. May they be encouragements to our heart. And may we reach out to those people around us in the grocery store, on the elevator, wherever it might be to be speaking a word for the name of Jesus Christ. May you bless each and every person this day in your precious name. Amen.